Welcome to this episode of The Gunman. In this video, I'll be taking you through how to cut and polish, clear coat, removing any imperfections, denibs or bits of dust that you may have left behind, and I'll be showing you how to cut and polish it up like a piece of glass, so you get extremely good gloss level and no orange peel left. So we're starting off here with the tungsten block, which is uh, a metal and it's got a sharp edge on it, it's been honed down and um, it's uh, pretty safe to run over your paintwork, it's only going to touch the high spots. And you see we've got little bits of dust here and you start it off relatively flat and then you can start to lift it up with more of an angle as it starts to shave it down. You've got to be careful with these, you can't start dead flat or else you can actually start to, um, to pull the bit of dust out and you'll be left with a low spot. So just be extremely careful when you're using these tungsten blocks. So you see we've got another little bit of dust there, we'll shave it down. And then next up we're going to be using the Orbital Sander, which is the Roop's Bigfoot brand. And I'm going to be using 1500 grit on it, which is these yellow ones. I always used to think um, with the bucket, doing it wet was the way to go. And since I started at this place, I've noticed that um, you can achieve just as good results, if not... Uh, better because it's a bit quicker doing it this way than using it wet. So you can see straight away I don't have any water, it's uh, it's nice and clean, all I have to do is grab my uh, airline and blow it off and it's a hell of a lot quicker. You can see there I've got that whole area flattened down within a, a matter of uh, under a minute. So just going back over, wiping it off and, and you can see easily what you have and you haven't done. I'm then going over the top section as well. I'll be taking you through all the different polishes and the cutting compounds that I'm going to be using. So the rest of the videos on this car I uploaded a couple of months ago and I'm finally just getting around to editing this video up now. So you, you're going to use about three, maybe four pieces on a bumper bar. Um, once they start uh, running out of uh, life they'll start doing little pigtails and you can start actually putting uh, scratches into it that you may not be able to polish out so it's important that you don't don't try and make them go for too long once once you notice to start to do the, the pigtails then you just rip it off and grab a new one Once we've done that, we'll get our, this is the compound I'm using, Juice is the brand, Super C, it's a really good cutter, it cuts in really nice and it doesn't leave it uh, too coarse either, so we only just got this one in recently, we used to use the Ferrecla G3 and to be honest, I actually think this stuff is a little bit better, it's, a, it's an Australian made product, so I'm not sure whether or not it's available uh, overseas yet, but if it is, I'd recommend giving it a shot because it's good stuff. So I'm, I've decided to use the, the mini buff on this job because um, cause the bumper bar is off the car. We didn't want to, um, to get cutters and polish all over, sprayed all over the car when we're cutting it. So we decided to do it off of the car. And... Um, I'd, being that it is off the car, I don't really want to use the big rotary buff because it got so much torque and it could um, move the bar and it could actually end up flying off the stand. So I decided just to spend a little bit extra time and use the mini buff on it to start off with. So I'll, I, I did edit out some of the footage, but um, I've left it at real time so you can actually see how long it takes to polish a certain section up. Obviously, it's not going to take quite as long when you're using the um, the big buff, the <coughs> electric one. You you really want to get a bit of heat in there too. Um, if if the panel's not warm, then it's not going to be removing those scratches that we've put in there properly. So I use fifteen hundred on the sander. Some people like to um, go over the fifteen hundred with a bit of three thousand grit, but I've found the fifteen hundred cuts up pretty nice with this this cutter. We've got to look at the car once it's done at the end too, so hang around for that. So I 
added it a bit out just there, but you can see it's starting to come up pretty nicely, getting a good gloss to it. There's no real orange peel left in it. Uh, I get some people uh, asking me questions like, how do I stop getting orange peel when I'm painting? Well, you can't. There's absolutely no way that you can spray paint something without any orange peel in it. Unless it's a dead flat panel that's, um, say, a bonnet or something like that, which has got no curves on it whatsoever, you can get pretty close to no orange peel, but uh, apart from that, you're just not going to be able to get it flat without polishing it. So sometimes you're better off not even trying, because if you do, then you get runs. So you're better off sometimes just getting it on nice and then polishing the rest up. So you can see here it's starting to come along quite nicely. Um, and the next step I'm going to be doing is swirl removing. And I'm going to be doing that with the Roots Bigfoot, which is this buff here. It's a orbital polishing, uh, it's orbital buff. So it goes around in circles and it also runs on a random orbit as well, which is similar to our DA sanders the ones that we sand our panels down with. These are great for blacks, for black cars. Also work well on every other single colour too. The the idea behind it is that the, the buff leaves uh, marks going around in the circle and sometimes you get them outside and you can still see the, the, the swell marks that, that the buff leaves behind but because this uh, breaks up the, the orbit and it goes left down, up and right as well, um, and randomly goes around that orbit, it will um, actually not leave rotary circles in it. So, Menzerna is the, the polish I used just there in case you missed it. Um, there's many different of those fine glazes on the market, but this is a good one. Wouldn't say it's the best, wouldn't say it's the worst, it's just, just average, it's good, it does the job quite well. And there's one more step after this, which is just going to be a quick hand polish with the Meguiar's Canuba Wax. So I'm really working that right in. You don't just want to give it a quick wave over. You want to make sure that you're really working those rotary scratches out from the from the buff. Although you may may not have been able to see them in this light, they they were there. And you put it out into the sun, and you'll be able to see some deeper scratches. So next up, we're going to be giving it a quick wipe off once this is this step's done. Just obviously being careful inside these these edges here. It's quite easy to catch the buff up on an edge, so you just stay away from the edge and need be. You can just uh, do it by hand if there's anything in there that you need to polish. But just take it very easy inside there. So check me out on Facebook if you haven't already. I've got a link in the description box of each one of my videos. Like, comment and share. Um, I put a link of every video I upload on YouTube to my Facebook page, so in case you miss out on, uh, on YouTube, you'll be able to catch it on Facebook. So next up, once that step's done, we'll just give it a good blow off, get rid of all the dust, so we're not dragging that dust around and actually um, creating more scratches when we're wiping that polish, that layer off, polish off. So I use that old rag when I was doing the cutting stage and I'm using a brand new one on this final polish stage. And the next step I'm going to be doing is giving it a quick hand polish. Maguire's wet look, oh sorry, Maguire's Canuba wax is the one that I'm going to be using. It's been a favourite of mine for a long time. I use it on my own cars at home too, so use and recommend. You've just got to be careful in the paint shop environments, uh, not to use too much of it. Um, I'm in a separate area as the wax can create uh, issues with the paint. So I'll make sure I just clean myself off before I go back into the paint shop. So I just got a bit of cheesecloth here. Just any fine <coughs> fine cloth will, will do fine. You can get particular applicators. A nice, get a nice amount in there. You want to work it right in. And then just circular motions. A guy actually taught me years ago <coughs> not to wipe off in circular motions, wipe off in straight lines because um, less likely to see 
swell marks, obviously it's just going to be a, a, a single line. And when it comes to wiping off, you don't want to wipe off too much. Just as soon as the polish is off, then you stop wiping it because the more you wipe it, then the more scratches you're actually going to put into it. I painted the uh, sill cover off this car as well and I used the same steps on that as the bumper bar but I decided to leave the footage for the sill cover out. We've got a quick look at the sill cover at the end but I decided to leave it out. The video got long enough as it is. So. Getting inside all those edges, make sure I've got no polish and stuff left behind. I was pretty happy with how this car came up. It came up really nice. Check it out at the end, hang around for a couple of minutes. If you follow these steps, you should be able to achieve the same results. Now just grabbing that new cloth again and wiping that Meguiar's off. And it, you know, as you can see, it comes off really nice. If you're in an extremely cold climate, you might want to wait in between uh, wiping it off for a minute or two just to let it glaze off. But it was uh, pretty warm on this day, so I didn't have to. Pretty nice finish on it. You're not going to get much uh, better than that, really. Here's a quick look at the sill cover, too. So the exact same steps were followed on this. On the inside, there, we didn't bother about. Uh, flattening it off because you're not going to see it on that return angle but up the back here we flattened it off this is the car out the front ready to be picked up by the owner actually turned out it was a little bit of an overcast day so it's not the best uh, light for it so um, the colour match is quite good this is the last video on this Lamborghini Check out the other ones if you haven't seen them. I've also got, if you hang around for another 20 seconds, we've got a quick look at it once it's in the workshop. It actually turned out that there's probably a bit better light in the workshop, so I'll have another quick walk around the car. After that, we've got a couple of links to a couple of my other videos. Check them out if you haven't seen them. Thanks for watching, and this has been another Gunman production. Goodbye.